Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of RPG Core Development. In this episode, I have lots of jobs to cover with. First of all, let me move my browser here for a minute. Okay, first of all, I imported a paid asset with a scene uh, just to show you guys uh, how our camera is working in a real environment of a game and uh, there is nothing in it really believe me and I'm saying it uh, even the camera has no script on it so first things first if you recall I told you guys that I'm going to add two uh, scripts in the scene so that my camera in the screen view follow uh, the character when we are playing I didn't mean two scripts honestly there are two different scripts that do the same job and this asset browser is bugging me for a minute okay one of them is on github you see the link on top and it's called scene case camera or chase and personally I like it more it's uh, an editor script so we need to have an editor folder anywhere in our asset folder and create a C-sharp script and what was the name again scene case uh, scene chase camera Okay, to control V and please open it in Visual Studio. Okay, and Visual Studio is up, so it's as easy as uh, copy and pasting all this code. Every time it gets a bit okay. Copy and control A, control V, and control S to save it. Uh, I will copy the next one too, and it's called uh, Scene View Camera Follower. It's a normal mono behavior script, and you see the link in top. Uh, see so I will put it on somewhere maybe on cameras why not create C sharp script control V I'm going back here reload all now my computer became a bit slow but we have it Okay, so again, copy and control A, control V, control S, and back to Unity. Okay, so and what parsing error? Why? I simply. I simply copy pasted all of it. Oh no, I forgot this. Okay. So at the end of if, there we go. Control S, it should be solved. Please. Console. Yes. And this error is because of asset browser for a reason I don't know. Anyway, now we have two ways of following the camera. One is from window, scene case camera. It will open a window here. Um, you need to put something here for it to follow. And we don't have anything here yet. So I just assign my main camera here. And active. And that's it. Now, you have to keep this window active when you are playing the game 
for it to work. We will take a look at that later. Okay. The next one, uh, you can put the script anywhere. I'll put it here. And uh, it works like this. First, it will be able to follow the camera only in play mode or other stuff. Now, uh, if I enable it, you see that I can't rotate the camera. It freezes the camera and I can't do it. But if I unclick it, again, I can focus. Okay? Um, if I say in play mode only, and I think I had done it now, the wrong place, I should add it somewhere around here, I think. So one, and it enable. Yeah, you see, we are looking from the camera per, uh, point of view, and I can't move it around. Okay, it's enable. So if I say in play mode only, now I can freely rotate it, but ah, I don't like it, you know, because honestly, it's a bit hard. Anyway. If I play the game now, am I in play mode? Yep. And you see, I'm not able to rotate the camera in this scene view. Anyway, but now if I play with the parameters like uh, X, no, uh, Z, yes, and rotating in Y, no. Rotating in Z, zero. Yeah, this guy. Okay. Now, if I move the camera in the scene view, you will see that scene is following my camera with the uh, Yahoo. Okay. Brain. Go with please. It will follow the camera or any object I assign this script on. Okay, I'll remove it. Now, uh, I will start working on mechanic, and this is the first episode. But I want to tell you guys where to get free animations that I'm using. One of them is on complete projects. If you scroll down, you will see, where is it? Yeah, here it is, Mechanim Locomotion Starter Pack and Mechanim Example Scenes. Get both of them. I also will use the teleporter later on to take a look inside of it. Another source of animation. If you come into animations, if it opens, please. Animations, I said. For some odd reason, when I open the Camtasia to record the screens, it mess up with everything. I pause the video. Okay, I have to close the asset browser and. Or you open it. Okay, animations, bipedal, and uh, loading, loading, loading. It's uh, slow because I'm downloading a freaking game just for the uh, R and D series on yeah uh, RPG Core brainstorming okay if we go on to price although it's sorted by price now now this guy row mocap data for mechanic it's a freaking good asset if you want to also 
there was another one if I find it now yeah here it is GA climbing rope this is what I don't have and I want to import it right now remember there is nothing there for climbing ladders free but this guy is good for ropes so it will go into hero and start it as a shaders. I'm not sure if I will get duplicated shaders. You will see. So importing the asset. And it should be imported. Okay. Let's take a look. Um Assets not paid free standard and it's on shaders. So what was that? Diff spec transparent. No, I don't have it. Good. Good, good. So I'll add it here. And I'll delete this guy. Now I have this that has uh, a humanoid and we will go through the stuff later but I will move it into uh, not here I want animations where is it come on animations here okay now I have a paid asset called Archer. I will use that model because honestly I like this guy. It has bow, it has arrows um, and I have few swords that I can add into the game. They are free assets and some pay paid assets later but this is the guy. Now first lessons on Mechanim. Get ready guys. Let's move this up here so that we have bigger room okay now when you work in legacy animation and character importing you just had model uh, tab in here that you could assign the scale factor blah 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 about your mesh in new mechanism, in new sorry Unity, when you have mechanism, these two tabs, rig and animations, are added. Now rig, uh, the generic rig is new again in mechanism. You have none. Legacy is used when you want the previous old system of animation on Unity. Generic is for characters that are not walking on two legs for example if you have a horse if you have a, a spider like robot you can use generic but if you have a character who walks on two legs and has two hands then you can use humanoid and then uh, hit apply and I will show you another option there A second yeah this freak is slowing me down Dungeons and Dragons online I'm downloading it and it's slowing me down drastically okay it's uh, applied now if you look in avatar definition we will speak about what is avatar okay later in avatar definition you have two options chrome from this model or if you have an avatar with the same skeletal names etc for example if you are working in a, com a company that has uh, a tool for Maya for example that is rigging your characters with the same naming conventions for your skeleton then you can use any other avatar you have in the game okay 
Optimizing game objects. I didn't use it till now. So first I will save the scene. Now if I go into configure, because I saved the scene, no pop-ups come up. But if I didn't save, it would have a pop-up here. Now in the scene view, you see my character's bones. And uh, I'm not sure if it's for uh, Unity of this version, but when you are in Avatar definition window, it slows down drastically sometimes. Okay. There is something important if you want to import your character for mechanic uh, and use humanoid. First of all, this dude that is green is called Avatar. And you see it on top, M Archer Avatar. What is important? Look at the scene view and the way the bones are assigned. Uh, I don't have any 3D application that can help me, but I think I can use paint for that. Now, let's say that you have a skeleton. If I can paint with mouse, that this is the spine goes up to clavicles and this is your leg knee and foot okay this is your hand, uh, arm going to your forearm going to your hand this is your neck going to your head in professional 3D animation studios, they keep this chain separately in these three places. Meaning that you have uh, at least one, two, three, four, five, six hierarchies of bones in your mesh. This hierarchy system won't work in Mechanim. For Mechanim, you need to parent your leg to your root parent your arm to clavicle, parent your neck to the spine, so that when you are working on mechanism, you will see this, biped, pelvis, and from pelvis, if I shrink it down, you will see spine, and from spine, you see this, left thigh, right thigh and then spine if I go down spine 2 and under spine 2 I see neck and under neck I have of course ah, this is a freaking interesting uh, rigging I never rigged the clavicle to the neck but they done it anyway you have head you have clavicles etc etc so when you come up in the hierarchy of your bones at the end you have a single bone that is responsible for everything okay if you are going to use humanoid configuring you need this setup every freaking bone should be parented to the other bones remember I said I will I would parent cla uh, clavicle to the spine not to the neck but this guy done it this way meh the only important thing is that you should have one single hierarchy of bones now how does mechanim find your bones to assign to this avatar from two different ways one is the hierarchy second is your naming if for some reason it can't find a bone for example for left elbow it will become red but if you go down on left arm you should see shoulder that is this guy then arm then lower arm that is elbow and then hand okay so if I want to I can drag and drop any bone from the hierarchy ouch I just messed up from hierarchy to this list or I can click it here and then use it like this and assign anything from here if I want to till I get green on all of these guys.
okay then I can hit apply and there is another part into it muscles apply when it's applied and you move into muscle tab uh, if it doesn't freeze thank you your character goes into a weird pose this pose and uh, this character is very helpful if it wasn't dark on textures anyway when you want to check your skinning on super extreme poses one of the reasons for this tab another reason let's say that it's a robot that has no spine but you should have uh, freaking okay but you should have spines for bo uh, bones for a spine but you don't want any animation happen on those spinal bones how can I achieve that if I go into the body you can see spine for example front and back it tells me that I can rotate the spine from negative 90 degrees to four uh, sorry, sorry negative 40 degrees to 40 degrees in front and back motion like this this is the limit of that bone okay if I don't want anything I can put zero and zero here or use these handles for example to tweak it anyway get to 40 and etc on all the bones you can have that uh, upper arm twist I can't for the life of me figure what these sliders do I never messed on with these guys anyway this is the avatar for you guys and avatar setup on biped characters when you are done doing these stuff when you are happy with your avatar when you are happy with your character you can uh, you can hit done come on I said done it will re-import your character into the scene it will re-import your asset sometimes you will see a slider here sometimes not next up is your animation tab now in previous legacy mode of mechanic on uh, unity you would see all these guys in a list and there was some options for looping them etc etc now things are freaking changed here you can import animations from the character if you have any then uh, you can use animation compression for optimize or keyframe reduction this is freaking good if you use a uh, auto key in your 3d application and you animate your character because when you use auto key on animating your characters and for example you just rotate on forward kinematics the keyframes are not just happening on the uh, rotation they happen on transform on a scale on every freaking thing that the uh, 3d application thinks that it needs to keyframe using keyframe reduction if the application don't breathe okay using keyframe reduction we'll go through your timeline and its keyframes find all those 0 0 0 0 0 0 or 10 10 10 10 10 keyframes continuous on your uh, timeline and delete keys on there that's one option for you rotation error position error if you keep your arrows on them there is a pop-up that gives you uh, enough info now let's take a look at one of these freaking animations for example generic jump if I hit play it will go through the animation and bam I see that I have lots of free time at the end okay I come down first of all I see some timeline okay 
I can scrub through the timeline like this from here and find an estimation time okay 2.17 uh, going up uh, my mouse wheel is not working correctly never had luck with that so I will have an option to change this guy normally I'm not sure why it's not active now Huh. This is freaking interesting. And I don't see my end of time here. Because I can now, I, I was able to zoom or move this guy here. And the game froze again. Okay. Come on. Move the slider, move the freaking slider. Oh, yeah. So I can move the slider all the way to the end. I'm not sure why it's like this. It should be. Uh, I should be able to keep the handle like this and move it around. It's locked for a reason I'm not sure why. If I hit apply. And let the asset reimport and come back when it's done. Okay. Now, if I choose the generic, come on. Okay. Generic jump. Hmm. Why are you not active? You know, you sh I should be able to scrub this guy and say, hey, all the time no it's not that and tell him hey you know I want to freaking shorten this guy you know clap branch oh yeah okay uh so jump and then there we go now it's working out okay so I play it I said play it please play it okay and I see that the jump is a nice loopable one one of the things that I do when I'm looping when I have a loop animation is that I will let it go for few or more times if it's freaking okay and take a look at this red and blue arrow it starts on the center and if I scrub I want it to end at the center center line in the uh, Z axis why is that because when it's a loopable animation if it's not like that, then the character starts uh, rotating around or moving in a direction that I don't want. Take a look at here. Average velocity. I have something on X, a little on Z. Uh, if I want to move it lower, I can play with some of these. For example, zero out. Uh, root transfer rotation if I move it you see that I'm reducing or uh, increasing this num number I will play with it until I get zero just like that no why what happened there okay zero that's good for me uh, this guy too I don't want that ouch it wasn't the one okay so zero out now if I play uh, before that I will apply because when you apply these two lines align themselves with the center just like that then I will scrub 
and take a look at the end now because I zeroed out the Z that's the only number I ever pay attention okay I don't mind X or Z uh, or Y in lots of the conditions they are not important because the Z velocity is zeroed you will see that we are perfectly aligned with the center again it means even if this character <coughs> jumps hundreds times one after another it won't rotate it won't go sideways anything anyway it, it will freaking stay on this position okay that's the only important thing now other stuff we have in here let me find an animation on a character that is not correctly looped to give you guys an example about what am I going to speak about for example idle oh I should ch select the character and yeah it's okay hmm do I yeah here we here we go you see the character is diving but hey there is a pause at the end it's not looped how did I know that loop time is yellow root transform rotation is yellow position XZ is great okay so I know that first my loop is not correct and freaking clamp range Okay, so first of all, it's not properly looped. My rotation is not matching from the start and the end of animation. And of course, my character, as you can follow, is moving in the scene. Okay. How can I do that? Well, if I bake it in position and apply. And let the asset import. Uh oh, it didn't work. Origin, apply. And play, didn't work. So I will leave it as it was. Uh, feet, center of mass original original I like it okay now how can we get this root motion from this character not in here okay motion uh, none. okay not in here. Anyway, if I go back and apply first, sometimes it takes time. Okay, if I go back into my model. Mm, no, was it here or no rig no and you see it says copy from other avatar I don't want that I want to create it from this model anyway you have no way to uh, oh get that you have no way to remove the root motion from the animation here but we will take a look at how we can do that later on now first things first I don't want this loop match being uh, yellow I will scrub and you see that it gives me some graphs and as I scrub 
I see that it's getting worse and worse and worse. Okay, loop match. Uh-oh. -uh. Yeah, what happened? Come on. Loop match they became green, but this guy is yellow. Let's preview the animations. Ah, much better. Okay, so how can I fix this guy? Well, I can still go through here and try my best to loop the match. Ma sorry, to match the loop. It should be around here. -ish. No? Okay. So we are not able. Uh, to match the loop, come on, perfectly on this animation. But at least yeah, it's a bit jumpy. Okay, I want the slower in playing. Yeah, it's jumpy. It's a lot jumpy there. How about eight? Okay, not a good point. So I want my character to be standing up. And it freaking freezes. Okay, ah, I got it. Second, I got it. Okay, here we go. You see the loop match came green. That was the one we need, not the one on root transform, but on looping time. Now, if you look, uh, it's still jumpy. And honestly, this is not a loop animation, but meh. Okay, so this is the best we get with sliding. What I can do is loop time, loop pose, and all the time I apply before checking it. Now if I play, oh, it's perfect now. Perfect. If I go back to one, you see there is very little, almost you can't find it. Just his right hand is just a bit jittering back. But how did I achieve it? First, I told him to loop the time. Second, this guy is freaking good. Loop pose. It means, hey, you know what? I have a pose on the start, like this. I want the same pose at the end. Put it at the end for me, please. And this little transition there, although I'm not sure if it was, I don't see any jerkiness around. Ah, it's here, okay, it's here. Anyway, that little tick, puts a pose from the start to the end on every body mo uh, part and that is really good just to make your animation being a perfect loop lots of the time that's the case lots of the time I like it and lots of the time I use it and uh, that's all that you can have in here some of the animations not on this guy let me see if I can find anything that needs it uh, 
jump up high, maybe. Now, not this guy. Go on. Okay, I couldn't find a freaking animation that I need to tell you how to use a root transform position. But sometimes, uh, your character goes up. Uh, that happens only on motion captured files sometimes. Then, you need to put it on feet. I'm telling you, hey, you know what? Just use the feet. And I think it was right here now. Oh yeah, look at it. You see? We just preview this animation. His feet are not moving, okay? Not moving at all. Yeah, it's moving. Sorry, faking, lying. Yeah, it's moving. Okay. Now, if I put it on feet, it's not happening here, but sometimes your character goes down and your feet get planted on the grid. That's good when you have some animations, <clears throat> as I said, spatial emotion capture animations, that your feet is not perfectly on the floor and you want your feet to be on the floor. Uh, that's how you use that. Okay? And I freaking found a good animation here. At the end of it, yeah, I was looking for some animation like that, okay? So let me show you another feature. I can just add an animation to the list, call it uh, Use, for example, and tell this guy, hey, you know what? I want this animation. Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Ah, click, please. It's not animating, okay? Oh yeah, it's animating. Okay? So I just duplicated this animation. Just like that, okay? And I can move, uh, come on, move the slider toward the end, and this is slider toward the end. there and I want to zoom here and it's freaking jumped back gosh come on there and Move it back. And is that the emotion I want? No, it's a slow. It's not the one I want. The one I want was around here. -ish. Okay, so I'll just close the gap, rewind back, okay, now play it, yeah, that's the one I wanted, okay. So what did I do? I just duplicated this animation 
and made my own animation. So if I open it now, oh, apply, sorry, I should apply first, and then you will see another animation down here, like that, okay? So I have a use animation, simple as that, that I didn't have before, and I was freaking looking for it. Okay, that's all into the uh, model and rigging and animation. Sometimes you don't get what you want, then you have to tweak and uh, play with these numbers until you get what you want. But now, uh, let's go back to our Archer model. As you recall, I don't want you, okay? As you recall, we have a scene. And we have the game that we need to work on. That's the whole purpose of these video tutorials. Okay, so I put the camera in front of the room and I have a character that I want to move around. First of all, I will drag my archer here. And I'm not sure why this guy is freaking... Okay. Kidding me, right? Uh, oh, oh, I said, oh, 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 ah. Okay. His hands should be empty now. Good. Uh, this character has nothing on it now. Close the castle, please. Okay. I wonder. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, no, 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 stay there. No, cancel. Close. Okay, this character <clears throat> needs to be set. Remember, when you chose your rig as humanoid you get this stuff animator this is the new mechanism system that tells your character how to move remember I told you there is a way to remove the root motion that's here we don't want that first of all okay uh, let's add our character motor there and if I put one it's perfectly aligned but there is a little trick that I use and many guys use and that's putting one like that it moves character uh, controller a bit higher and uh, on camera we need our RPG camera TPS. Okay? Remember, our archer has no camera pivot. We need to tag archer as player. And uh, every freaking model there, except Python, tag as player. Okay? Now, if I play the game, You see that the camera jumps there. I can move the character, but there is an issue. I can't go on this. Steps. Why is that? Here, slope limit. Use 80 or 90 degrees. Now if I move, I can move up. But in the same time, if I try to... Oh, nice. If I try to move higher, I can't. Okay? If I go high, rotate my character and come back and I slide. Nice. 
uh, our camera system has a bit of problems. We will address it later. But let's take a look at scene case camera. The one that I prefer. I drag and drop it here. And I zoom on most of the time the feet. That's something I want to see. Okay. Now if I play, remember, scene case camera is active window. Okay, I can adjust my camera to look at the feet. Come on. From very close up. And if I move the camera, you see that, oh well, hey, I'm following the character. I didn't notice this bump here. Okay, so I can still move. And, oh yeah, I forgot something. Then you do stuff in play mode. We need to look it back. There we go. And now I'm going up. So, in next episode, what we will do is that uh, we'll work on animating this character. We've gone through the basic setup on Avatar and tweaking the animations we want or whenever we want we can use it but we are not animating the character we will take a look at it later in next episode but before doing that let me show you guys ah come on camera This bad boy. First of all, one and uh, enable so I can see where I am. Now I will position it like here ish and a bit higher back. And rotate on Z, was it? No, 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 no. Zero on Y. And move it back. Okay? Like that. And now I say only in play mode. So if I play, even though that the scene case camera is not active, my camera will still follow my character with the angles I told him to do it. So if I rotate, you see, now there is the difference. My camera is not following the rotations of my character. And hey, I don't slide now. What's going on? Well, that's an issue with our script on the character. You remember we were sl uh, sliding because I tweaked this number in runtime. When you do that uh, in the first, uh, let me let me show you that what I mean by that. Character motor, come up. Yeah, I have it here. Ignore all. Where is it? Character player motor. Okay. In a start, we set slide limit equals to controller dot slope limit minus some number. Okay, so when I play it in runtime and then tweaking the number, this script has a slide limit set already, so it will slide. But now, when I tweak it in here, before running. Now it says, hey, sliding limit equals 89.9. .9. And that's not true. So, in next episode, before going to start animating my character, I have some things to fix. One of them is this. I want my sliding limit being separated 
from my character controller. The second one, if I do it right, right now, I think I can mimic it. My camera has an issue. You see, even when my camera is disclosed, I can move around and look around. Uh, don't look at the character, but look at the environment. It's rotating, okay? Now, if I go closer and closer, hey, what just happened? Why can't I look around? Well, the thing is, uh, wait a minute. I don't want you active, okay? Frame. Here is my camera, okay? Here is the position of my camera, right at the center. Now, where is my target look at? Or was it camera pivot name? Something like that. Yeah, here. It's perfectly on top of each other. Or very close to each other. Because if you look at the camera, you see that distance is 0 0.05 from the target. So the camera is rotating on very uh, small radius around the target. We don't want that. So that's one single line of code. In the camera script, I will check if it's less than 0.1, for example, then I will assign 0.1. <clears throat> because you will find that, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, take a look at the numbers. Point? Ah, it's a bit hard now, let me. Okay, so if I reduce this to something like uh, point 0.1, I'm not sure it's, if it will work. Yeah, it's jumping too much. Still, come on, mouse smoothing. No, not that. Ah, 0 0.08. Mouse scroll. Yeah, that's it, okay? So point 0.8, point 0.2, point 0.1, and I'm still just above point 0.05, but I'm able to rotate around, okay? But as soon as I scroll once more, I lose that control. So it's sufficient enough to keep it at as 0 0.051, for example, and it will be safe. Okay, and it won't work like this. Yeah. Come on. Okay. So, another issue. You can see it just now. If I move back a bit, I'm looking at the hip of the character. The reason is that the amount of the camera target's Y position is hard-coded. I don't want that. I want my height to be somewhere around here-ish. So that if I just move in to the point like this, when my character is faded, I will be in the same height of the character's eyes. Okay, and look around. Another issue that I don't like the way I done it is that in my camera, <clears throat> you see I have a player mesh and I need to assign it by myself and just look at this character how many uh, objects is there that I need to drag and drop one after another I don't like that another issue is in my uh, camera script itself you see, I have this guy here, camera setup, that will take a look if we don't have a camera, then we will create the camera and etc. Now, let me ask you, if I don't have camera, what the hell, which script should call this guy? No one, there is no camera there to call this script. So I have to move this uh, method outside of my camera setup. 
it's outside of my camera script inside another script and that script would be responsible to uh, spawn my character assign the camera uh, and uh, assign player mesh objects to the camera so until next episode uh, uh, have fun everybody by the way next episode I will fix these issues on the scripts animating the character we'll go to the episode 4 and uh, because first of all I want to have a good camera system before uh, a good ca camera and character system I should say before doing any other stuff on mechanic so hope you enjoyed this episode have fun everybody bye bye